based on populist, anti-European or xenophobic views. They exploit people's fears, legitimate disappointments or anger. They steal, twist and misuse the sense of patriotism. They thrive on divisions. And they often play with fire, eager to destroy our European cooperation, our European dream. Welcome back to our politics. That was the Commission Vice President Maros Shevchovich this morning officially announcing his bid for a promotion to be the Socialists and Democrats, a lead candidate for the position of EU Commissioner. And also joining us today, of course, uh, Darren, you're back on the show, and Valentina Pop, Brussels correspondent for the Wall Street Journal. You were saying, you were talking there about uh, simplistic language, uh, using fears, exploiting fears. Were you thinking of certain individuals or groups in particular? What were you trying, your message really? I, I think my, my message was that uh, I am uh, uh, one of many who actually lived behind the Iron Curtain. We've been outside of the European Union and we really lived uh, in the societies where you had no democracy. So I know how harsh it was, how difficult it was, and therefore when we are now in uh, this age and uh, I hear, you know, some of the stories, some of the simplistic uh, solutions and also the attempt to scare the people and to try to convince them. Okay, so what is the solution you'll be bringing I think the, the solution is that we need, to, uh, we need to have a little bit more of a positive agenda. We have to really ignite the aspiration in the European people to make sure that Europe will continue to be the best place on, on earth to live in. And therefore but I also... people feel that their fears are not being addressed. How would, you, how would you address that? Of course, I think we have uh, to uh, reconnect um, uh, with the people and, uh, and talk to them uh, directly. And I know from really, I would say, hundreds of meetings I had across the Europe over the last uh, uh, few years, that what is the best argument you can provide with the people is, is a concrete example of where Europe has to work together, where Europe delivered, and uh, where without Europe we simply wouldn't play the important role on the global stage. Be it, you know, this... Uh, industrial policy, the, uh, the autonomy in key technologies uh, or simply ability to play uh, more freely on the, on the global stage, to remain the global, global actor and I think for all that with such a partners and competitors like United States and China, there is not a single country in Europe uh, which can do it on its own. People would like something concrete. We are saying positive agenda and, and it sounds good as Look, a countermeasure to fear mongering, but what concretely concrete, would people galvanize uh, for? I think if you, if you look for a uh, concrete agenda, so I mean, uh, I know that we do not have uh, uh, much more time, but there are issues like uh, the need for geostrategic technological sovereignty. I saw what we can do in Europe if we work together. Look at uh, the, the project which I started, the Airbus for batteries. Look what we can do for conversion on the carbon intensive region and how indispensable Europe is to fight climate change. So for all these areas we need real European unity and this think, but, but, you, okay. but you also need an alternative agenda on the issues that really do matter to people. In it's speaking of, of alternative agenda, I mean, there, is, there, there are individuals now that, um, you know, you've announced your, your candidacy and, and so did yeah. the main parties. But here, we're slowly hearing names of, of politicians and someone has been put forward, in fact, by a former uh, presidential candidate in France. And he said that one guy that would be really good is the bad boy of Greek politics, Yanis Varoufakis. He said he would be an excellent candidate for president of the European Commission. He has faced up to the Troika, the Council, the ECB. He would make an excellent successor to Juncker. I mean, to your point, you need someone very different. What, what do you think of this comment? Uh, I mean, Can he uh, be? He's definitely, he's definitely <laughs> he's got, be entertaining. I we saw a few weeks ago when you interviewed him, he's got very passionate views about Europe. He is concerned about the rise of populism and wants a whole alternative agenda. And I think very well and good talking about an optimistic message and about the alternatives that Europe can offer for voters. But there also has to be whoever is the next commission president. And interestingly, Jean-Claude Juncker, when I interviewed him last week, said his biggest regret was this growing split between the East and the West, is someone has to be able to counter with actual tangible things uh, the concerns of voters when it comes to issues yeah. like migration, rather than just saying we need to talk about something else. And Valentina, you have been a Brussels correspondent for a while now. You've seen several elections. Do you, yeah. Are you optimistic about this election being slightly, you know, more different and would address actual problems rather than kicking the can down the road? Oh, it's for sure is going to be different. I'm not sure how optimistic I am about the mm. outcome. I think it will result in a pretty hung parliament or where the or a splintering for sure of the center. That's what every pollster is, yeah. is, is um, predicting. But um, in terms of how people can galvanize around Europe for 
a theme or a topic, I am actually quite pessimistic. I must say, I, I must agree with Mr. Orban that elections are yeah. held domestically and the domestic issues um, are that topping the agenda and, and not European issues. I'll give you the last word on this. You know, everyone's looking at the rise of a more populist bloc yeah. in the parliament. I mean, the centre, it doesn't exist anymore, does it? No, I think uh, it exists, but of course we have to make it uh, much more vibrant, much more present in our member states and to have the positive agenda because uh, I agree with you that migration is a big problem, but I think we are dealing with it and I'm sure that by the European elections we will have a good solutions which will bring that sense of security to our people. But uh, if you're talking about the East and West, I think what is also very important uh, to talk is that people are worried about the globalizations, about the income, about the future of their job, and still the differences between East and, uh, East and West are quite big. So therefore, I'm for restarting the integration engine where we would really look for the ways how we can really uh, accelerate uh, the smoothing over the, the differences and, uh, uh, and, and problems uh, which we have in this relationship. And I think it's absolutely crucial, and I believe that uh, Centre will right. play its part. Thank you very much, uh, Marusha Shevchovic, for being here today. You, you and, have uh, to come on when he wins. Know, you have to. You have to come on. And thank you, Valentina.